Hello everybody, let's talk about legacies. I've long believed that as we move towards the end of our life, we ask what we did with what we had and did we make the most of everything that we're given. These are sobering questions meant to reflect upon what we've done and what we had left to do before our age and illness consumed our present. I also believe that after our life ends, we ask the same questions. What did we do with the talents that we were given? What did we do with the money we were born into, the outstanding athletic skills we were given, and the phenomenal intelligence we may have been granted? Did we overcome our obstacles that were meant to test our will and our resolve? And did we cower before adversity, or did we meet the devil with the greatest of courages and wills? And in doing so, did we show that we're willing to go down swinging for what we were and what we wanted to be? There are Those are the things that create a legacy that lasts for generations. That's because a legacy that one can leave should be one of decency, honor, and goodness in addition to displaying an unselfish ambition. And if you can do so, well, you may have accomplished everything that you could have in that life. Think of Milton Hershey, who left his entire fortune to educate the less fortunate, or Osceola McCarty who saved what little money she earned throughout her life to provide college education for women who could not afford to go to college. She certainly didn't want them to live the life that she did. There's few people, though, who left a greater legacy than Danny Thomas. As the years go by, I suspect that fewer and fewer people will remember Danny Thomas. It's not, it's not because of what he did when he was here, but what he left when he passed away. He was born in 1914, a few years after my own grandma, and he died in 1991. He was, by most accounts, a great person, lived a great life, and had many professional and personal successes. He was married to his wife, Rosemary, for over 50 years and had three children, one of which, Marlo, starred in That Girl and later married Phil Donahue, and herself has went on to win many Emmys and Peabody Awards. His successes in the television arena have stood the test of time. For 11 years, he started Make Room for Daddy, which was a great success and won five five Emmys. He was a respected producer and worked on many shows, including The Dick Van Dyke Show, The Mod Squad, and The Andy Griffith Show. He also won more awards than just the Emmys. He won the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Television Hall of Fame, the Bob Hope Humanitarian Award, and the Congressional Gold Medal. His most significant accomplishment, though, was the founding of the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. The founding of the hospital is a great story of perseverance, but mostly of promises made and promises kept. More than 50 years before that, Danny Thomas was a struggling comedian who worried about making a living for himself, his wife, and his very young children. While in Chicago, he went to the St. Jude's Church, and he said that, and he prayed, that if he was made a success by St. Jude that he would build a shrine for him. Shortly thereafter, his career skyrocketed and the financial successes he had prayed for came. He remembered that promise he made to St. Jude. And in the early 1950s, he started planning a children's hospital to be aptly named the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. It was to be a unique hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. Danny traveled the country to raise the funds necessary to build and maintain a world-class research facility. A group of Arab-American community leaders of Lebanese descent founded ALSAC, the American Lebanese Syrian Associated Charities, whose sole purpose to this day is to raise funds for the hospital. Today, it's the third largest healthcare charity in existence. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital opens its doors in 1962 and is now one of the world's preeminent specialty hospitals. It has more than 3,000 employees, over 4,000 patients active, and sees more than 5,000 patients a year. It raises more than, get this, $500 million a year. What is admired about the institution is not its Nobel Prize winning scientists on staff, which it has, are its reduction in the effects of many diseases on children, but that their families never have to pay for treatment that is not covered by insurance, and families without insurance are never asked to pay. No child is turned away because of a a family's inability to pay. Few people I know have created a legacy of such lasting significance as Danny Thomas. 
He was not the most famous comedian, not the most talented, or not the most successful entertainer. He was not the wealthiest either. But his legacy outshines those of his generation who continued to take everything they were given and gave so little back. His life and his promises he kept should serve as a shining example to others. His accomplishments show that, in this life, we often judge more by what we do with what we have rather than what we had when we started. Long after Donny, Danny Thomas's success in television had forgotten, he'll be known as a great man because he created the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. He lived a great life, and though that life allowed him to live better, he thought more of others than he did himself. There's no greater heritage one can leave his family than his contributions to society's well-being. What is most interesting is that for most of great people that we've studied, their legacy has little to do with how they made their livings or fortunes. Long after Dolly Parton is remembered as a pioneering entertainer, the Imagination Library she founded will be involved with children's literacy. Long after Eunice Shriver is remembered as a philanthropist and a crusader for the mentally disabled, um, she will be known as the person who started Special Olympics. Few have left such a legacy for future generations, and I sincerely hope that you will join that esteemed list. Thanks, and have a great day, everybody.